Well, happy Saturday, folks. The Real Captain Kirk here. We're live from One Bethlehem Plaza here in downtown Bethlehem here on the 19th of October. A ton to cover today here, so we're going to move at warp speed here. We'll save this uh, for the end here, but the auroras were obviously epic here this past week. Again, the fifth time this year we've seen them here in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania here, but we'll save the, the video here for the end. Uh, look at a recap of Q3 here. Only about two weeks left of the retail quarter here of Q3, August, September, October. Um, and it's been pretty impactful. Again, we've had... Uh, four uh, systems here september october and then one back in august for debbie but again with this time of year we look for cold wet weather wetter weather year on year so these bars on top are the temperature trends nationally from last year and the precip peach bars down below are the rainfall trends versus last year so we've had a, a good period there in mid-august for uh, back to school early september a really strong period again remember that was the colds and 10-day stretch there of colds in 40 years uh, in the northeast uh, mid-atlantic so that was a really cold stretch and then it got warm again and then another brief blip in early October and now it looks like our next major blip will be in the uh, middle of November when we think the colder wetter trends will continue. Again we see some of that colder building up in Alaska so again that should make its way down here within a couple weeks so let's hope that that'll be the next good period to, to kick off Q4. Looking at drought here, drought has just exploded. Uh, we were down to about uh, 26 percent of the country dry to drought being very very wet uh, back in early june and that has exploded now back to 78 percent of the country in dry to drought phases uh, second most in 24 years so again a huge change from uh, wet and flooding uh, to drought here with this extremely uh, dry september october here nationally the driest in over 40 years if we look at uh, the dry weather again helps the the leaves to fall quicker and change quicker and so we're seeing that here in the northeast great lakes mid-atlantic where there's a pretty substantial um, week to two week uh, earlier fall color here uh, in our region so again uh, peaking here uh, this week here in the in the northeast look at wildfires wildfires again because of the dry conditions here um, they're up about 24 percent we've had about um, 7.86 million acres burned again so most in four years we actually think this will get worse with the drought expanding and uh, not expecting a ton of rain and snow like they've had the past couple years in the Sierras of California. So we think next year could actually be the worst in 10 years for wildfires, at least in terms of acres burned. Uh, rapidly going through the hurricane list here, uh, Oscar flared up uh, today out of nowhere, really. It was nothing and became a hurricane, Cat 1 hurricane, north there of Haiti um, within 12 hours. So it was a pretty, it's a really very small storm uh, hurricane, but um, it's going to uh, make a right turn, impacting some of the uh, eastern Bahamas, uh, but again, mostly making a right turn uh, out into the Atlantic. And then we'll get a probably a 10-day lull here uh, with an unfavorable MJO cycle, and then that probably gets more favorable again as we get into very late October into November. So again, we may get a flare-up again, again here as we get into late October, November time frame as we get toward the end of the hurricane season. And this just shows uh, all the hurricane metrics are pretty much way above average now for the season. We've had five landfalling hurricanes in the U.S. We typically would have a uh, just south of two, um, so way above average in terms of uh, landfalling hurricane impacts, and obviously Milton and Helene have been uh, just catastrophic here. And again, uh, so a big map here is just showing where all the systems have made landfall here uh, so far this year with uh, 16 systems and um, again, five hurricane landfalls and one potential tropical cyclone, Debbie there, that near Debbie, um, made landfall as well. Look at the 14-day outlook of storm tracks here again. You'll see a little bit of a lull here, and then we see another flare-up uh, right as we get into the very late part of this period here, which would make sense as we get back to a favorable MJO cycle. Look at flu because it's so warm here. One bellwether predicting the flu is just uh, Australia, what happens there, and they've had a type A very late season uh, start, just as it looks like we're having here, and uh, very predictable. Cold weather in the southeast where kids go back to school earlier tends to be the start of the flu season. So you see the really, really cold back in 2022 when it was the coldest in 21 years, September, October. And uh, again, look at flu. It went off the scale. We were peaking by Thanksgiving with a kind of a historic or very early peak um, in 2022. Not the case then in 2023. Again, a little bit warmer. And uh, again, we had a Christmas peak, so about a month later. And then this year, we're the warmest in three years. So very, very warm conditions this year. And you see the flu is uh, the least in three years. So again, uh, so goes the weather early in the season. How's the spread? So again, with the warmer weather here the next couple weeks, um, we may actually have a very late flu season peaking more toward mid-late January uh, than um, Thanksgiving or Christmas. Last week across the world, ending here tonight to here on the 19th, here in the U.S., it was a colder week, uh, favorable for retail sales in some regards, uh, 0 0.8 cooler than last year, 16th coolest in 39 years, below average temperatures, 44% drier than last year, driest in 9 years, third driest in 39. We typically want to see cold wet as the favorable categories for 
seasonal sales here uh, again, but pretty much had that in the east where it was the uh, coldest in about uh, 15 years again. So very strong temperature-based uh, trends here in the east. So it should have been a, an uptick uh, for some of those seasonal category sales. Um, Canada, a little bit cooler, still well above average. Um, Russia was a cold spot, cold and, and wet uh, across Russia and snowy. Obviously, wet this time of year up there means snow. So all that um, blue you see there in uh, Russia, again, uh, good news because that's snow. And if you like snow, early snowpack in Siberia is one index of potential snow and cold here in the eastern half of North America, Canada and the eastern U.S. So it's just, again, one metric that can lead to a colder uh, winter ahead uh, here in the U.S., Look at this week here, again, the last uh, full week of uh, October here, ending the 26th, a hot week. Uh, one degree warm in the last year, number one hottest in 39 years. Hard to find any good weather out there. Maybe the Pacific Northwest is cooler wetter would be a, a bright spot. And um, uh, But again, for the country overall, it's dry. 75% drier than last year, dry in 11 years, second dry in 39 years. So again, a good week for farmers getting out there. Again, they, they kind of like this uh, dry weather. It helps with their harvesting activities, dries out the corn and soybeans uh, really well, so they don't have to pay to have their corn dry out um, because, again, they needed a certain weight in terms of moisture content. And so this is good news for them, uh, again, out there harvesting a record-shattering crop for corn, um, about 184 bushels on average per acre here this year. So, again, that's a record crop for sure. Starting to talk snowfall. I know it's a four-letter word for some talking this early, but, again, there is some snow in the higher Rocky Mountains, especially there in Colorado. So again, uh, tis the season, and these maps will be coming as we go through the fall-winter season. Look at next week here, week uh, ending 2 November, so it's the end of the retail Q3, again, in a, another warm week. So it's going to end on a not-so-favorable note here for retail seasonal sales. 10.9 warmer than last year. Very, very cold this time last year, just uh, frigid. Uh, but again, this year, very, very warm, polar opposite. Um, warmest in eight years, second warmest in 39 years. Uh, rainfall up a bit, 7% wetter than last year. Some heavy rain there in the Midwest, uh, central Corn Belt regions, but again, still um, 16th driest in 39 years for the U.S. overall. So um, again, some benefit there if it's going to be hot uh, and wet. Uh, wet helps a little bit with uh, people thinking seasonal sales, but uh, not much. You really need colder temperatures, which we don't really have. Look at the World Two-Week Outlook here. We see, again, that cold air bottled up in uh, Alaska and western Canada, again, and then probably the Middle East would be the few favorable areas for uh, fall seasonal sales. We're going to get a lull here for the next couple weeks, and then this may uh, improve as we get into mid-November for um, the Americas uh, here in the uh, United States and uh, Central Canada. And just look at the precip trends here again for the two-week period here. You see all that snow across uh, Siberia and expanding, exploding actually across uh, Alaska, Canada, setting down an early snowpack here. So again, uh, a sign of things, again, this is one thing you need to have a colder winter here in the U.S., which we believe we're going to have, and uh, potentially even a snowier winter here in the U.S. So we'll end here, folks, with the uh, Aurora video, and uh, hope you have a great week ahead, and we'll talk to you this time next week. Thank mm -hmm. you.